Welcome to Gulfstream today, and welcome to beautiful Gulfstream Park. Ron Nicoletti, along with Acacia Courtney, and uh, it is Wednesday afternoon. We're about to kick off another fun week here at Gulfstream Park, and we're starting today. Fast main track, firm turf course. How you been? I'm good. We're reunited. Ronnie is back from Maryland, and it's great to have you back alongside. Pete and I had a lot of fun last week, but we certainly missed you. Well, that's nice to be missed. Uh, <laughs> we had a lot of fun up there. <laughs> up in Pimlico it was a good thing. The people up there are great, and they really uh, are very, very friendly. Uh, besides the people that work at our sister track, uh, just uh, people in general in Maryland are really, really nice, yeah. so it's a lot of fun. As I mentioned we got this fast main track today firm turf course got a couple of really nice carryovers but the first race we're going to start of course with acacia's super high i mean early pick five ticket and that'll be race number one uh, then we're going to go to race number three today and that's where we have the rolling super high five starting with fourteen thousand dollars we had a good carryover last week and they bet over two hundred thousand yeah. dollars into it so we always got to pay attention to this along with the rolling super high five that starts in race number three we also have the rainbow six starting to build again it's up to over 73,000 and I will have a ticket in the rainbow six and then we're going to end a day as far as the ex exotic wagers go we have all wages throughout the afternoon with the late uh, pick five and that's race is uh, you know five four through eight and you'll have another ticket there so lots of fun this afternoon and uh, exaggerator wins the yes. Preakness uh, slips through a good ride by Kent Somo, so a yes. lot of fun it's uh, a shame that we're not going to have Nyquist in the uh, in the uh, battle with him in the Pimlico, I mean in the Belmont Stakes, so it should be a lot of fun anyway. It'll always be a lot of fun, and there's still so much excitement on the Triple triple Crown Trail, and as you said, Nike was missing the Belmont, unfortunately he had a fever, but uh, still so valiant in defeat, Nyquist, a really great effort by both horses there, and then Cherry Wine to slip through and get second, but as you said, just a perfect ride by Kent DeSormo, really impressive to see him there, and you, you have Triple Crown fever all year <laughs> round, we look forward to this time of year, it's like Christmas for racing people. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, as I mentioned, but let's get to the task at hand, and that's looking at this Wednesday card, first race is six and a half furlongs, these are claimers, Three and up, $6,250. A couple of scratches in here of the number five, Great Aztec, and the number six, Amesoa. Uh, we're dealing with a, uh, a you know, five-horse field in the opener, and I know that you have a pick five ticket that you want to show the people, and uh, let's take a look at that. I do. My early pick five ticket, I went too deep, too deep, uh, four in race three. That, that was a tricky race, I thought, in the third race, because it's a, a bunch of first-time starters, just a couple horses with experience, and you don't always exactly know what's going to happen in a race like that, and then three and two for a $48 ticket. But um, this first race was a little bit tricky, I think, too, especially with the scratches. It kind of uh, took away some of the, the interest of the race that might happen there, and as you said, we're we're left with a five horse field and uh, I use the number one smoking the field on top and we have the same three horses just in a little bit different order. Yeah I mean smoking the field is hoping to get away from the starting gate today in a timely fashion. He broke tenth and last from the rail last time out. He's going to break from the rail again today after rallying to finish fourth going seven furlongs last time out. Certainly looks like a logical a contender in there but I did go with the number three. It's not we and I'll tell you why because I thought the scratches are both number five great Aztec and number six Mace. Those were a major part of the pace scenario mm -hmm. as I've seen. And I think maybe a horse like the three, it's not me, can turn out to be the controlling speed with those scratches. So I put this horse on top of my ticket very early in the wagering up there at four to five. Uh, and the other horse that uh, used in second and I used in third was the number two double judge. Yes, this looks to be the other speed horse mm -hmm. here. And as you said, the scratches kind of affected the way the pace scenario might play out. Uh, it's not me is a stakes winner as well. Does have some good back class there. And it seems like some of the horses in these fields, this this particular field kind of take turns beanie each right. other. Uh, I thought that the number seven Rancho was an interesting one as a long shot play kind of on the bubble here. This one looks to be the main closer, been working really nicely coming in, but I stuck with the top three that looks like the three most viable options to actually win the race. Yeah, let's go to race number two today, and this one is uh, seven and a half furlongs, and this is an allowance optional claimer for three-year-olds and up uh, $35,000, and uh, uh, I want to go back and show you performance of the horse that we both have on top of my ticket, Conquest Pacemaker. This wasn't its last start, but this was the Toronto Cup. I'm going to show you the stretch run. The Toronto Cup was a, this was a pretty nice performance. Went wire to wire in the, this race. And you see in the stretch here, and this horse came back after that and ran in the dueling grounds of mile and 516th race. Didn't run that well. Coming back off the layoff today for trainer Mark Cassie. And I just wanted to go back and show you, this course was pretty nice in this race. Yeah, this is certainly the class 
last of the field here. Mark Cassie has two, uh, the five Conquest pa Pacemaker and the six. Hear that tune. It looks like Conquest Pacemaker is the more genuine speed of the two that he has. And uh, it looks like this one, especially cutting back into the distance, he actually debuted sprinting on the turf. And then, as you mentioned, been really stretching out to some more tougher distances and some stakes as well. So dropping off about an eight-month layoff and cutting back in distance as well might bode well for him. Yeah, and I think we have a stat on uh, Conquest uh, Pacemaker as we'll look at right now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and there you go. Uh, the Mark Cassie is uh, 18 for 122, 15%, 45% in the money, only $1.63 ROI. That's uh, coming off a longer than 180-day layoff on the turf over the past five years. So he's been in the money a lot of times, but that's why you'll see you get those short prices on type of horses like mm -hmm. that. Horse looks like he really classes up nicely in this spot. Been waiting for this horse to run back. Yeah. Uh, to see him run, he was scratched, I believe it was last week or yes. so, and uh, now he gets that chance to run this afternoon. Well, who else did you use on your ticket? I also used the number one and the number two, the two horses on the rail. I landed, uh, it looks like you you used the number one, Little Balter, as well. This one uh, seems to be, uh, after cutting back to a sprint last time, stretched out to a mile, two back, coming out of the old man, Eloquent, then uh, cut back to five furlongs last time and was beaten only by two lengths. It's a pretty big long shot there. Been working very nicely coming into this race. And then I used the number four, Firestarter, who's making his first start on dirt after 15 lifetime starts, but starts, but is a half to a grade one winner, Bordenaro, who's a multiple graded stakes winner as well. His dam was a winner on turf, as was uh, some of his siblings. So I think that there is some turf pedigree there as well. He's a five-year-old Ridgeling by Tappet. So should be interesting to see him make his turf debut. Well, getting back to number one, Little Baltar, he's going to uh, stretch it out around two turns after that. The solid effort going five-eighths against 62 optional claimers. He rallied, got beat two lengths. But if you go back and look at this horse's past performance, the last time he stretched out from five furlongs to seven and a half furlongs, he won. And that five furlongs I'll be was in a race move to the main track. But it shows that he can handle this distance today. So a logical choice in here. And while we're here, let's mention that other horse from Mark Cassie, and that's the six here, that tune. This one is making his turf debut after facing $62,500 optional claimers in four main track sprints while in the Stanley Gold Barn at Godzias. I thought this horse was a little bit intriguing in here. Uh, I think, as you mentioned, the five concourse pace, pace setter is really the speed and the speed in there, but I think this horse, maybe not when it can be somewhere on the ticket. So you see our selections in race number two. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll show you my Rainbow Six ticket. Welcome back for race number three. Four and a half furlongs, maiden special weight. Two-year-old fillies, a very, very fun race in here. Seven runners will be going to the post. And as I mentioned, this is where the Rainbow Six starts on an, with an eight-race card. Over $73,000 in the pool. Quickly show you my ticket. And uh, as you mentioned before, some first-time starters in here. So I went three deep, two. Then I went four in the fifth race. I found that one pretty wide open. Two, three. And then in the last race, the one and the nine. The nine is actually my best bet today. It was six to one on the morning line. But more about that horse later $57.60 and now we'll talk about the race and how did you start it off well, I started off with the number two cabinet. Uh, this one has a race under her belt already. She showed a little bit of speed and chased the leader and was second best, though she was beaten by nearly 11 lengths in her debut. Uh, but she's a half to a stakes winner. She's by Discreetly Mine out of a defu deputy minister mayor. And uh, she's trained by Dane Kubiski. A quick stat, quick stat for you on Dane Kubiski in the past five years with second career start in made in special weight like this one is some pretty gaudy numbers. 12 for 51, 24% win. 23 for 51, so 45% of the money in the time, in, uh, 45% in the money, and then also a positive ROI of 272. So I thought that that was pretty big there. Well, the horse that beat this one, the two cabinet, was a horse called White Gold, who's also from the Dane Kabitsky barn. So Dane is doing really well with the two-year-olds. He's got a couple of winners already. A and cabinet is sire, uh, is discreetly mine, and I want to show you a sire stat here. Uh, on two-year-olds, discreetly mine, who I mentioned is the sire, he's 72 for 448. That's 16% win average, which 
every two-year-old first-time starters. That's pretty good when you have that many horses running 448. So this one, I just thought, has the uh, breeding to win early. So just wanted to put that stat out there. Uh, I showed you my ticket, but I went a little different way in here. I went with the six horse in here, and that's Lulu Laura. And I'll tell you why. This is a daughter of Circular Key and a half-sister to the grade three Sanford Stakes winner and the grade one stakes place Uncle Vinny uh, debuting for trainer Kathleen O'Connell. Series of solid workouts showing at Gulfstream Park West. The Sanford Stakes is a two-year-old race, so this horse has shown the sire or this, this breeding has shown the ability to win early. So I put the number six, Lulu Laura, on top of my ticket, trained by Kathleen O'Connell. And I see you, we basically use the same horses, mm -hmm. just in a different way. So let's hear about the number three, Jax. Yes, well, I, I liked Lulu Laura for the same reasons mm -hmm. that you mentioned there. And Kathleen O'Connell always does a great job with her first-time starters as well. And, and the number three, Jax, first-time starter for for Wesley Ward, debuting with Outlay Six, has Apprentice John Cruz aboard, and this one's a, a half to a, a graded stakes place horse, horse minutes and touches, so there's some good breeding there as well. Uh, and just another, you know, don't leave Wesley Ward <laughs> off your ticket, especially with some of those firsters. Yeah, and you know, this, is, uh, this is a daughter of City Zip, and City Zip, almost the same stat as Lulu Laura, as far as uh, uh, the sire producing uh, debut winners. Uh, the horse is 72 from 448, 16% too, so right around there so we'll see how that works out with uh city zip everybody knows that horse if you're in south florida a lot of two-year-old runners from there so the third race very exciting and uh we'll see how that plays out now we'll go to race number four and this one is a one mile claiming event Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, non-winners of two races in life, $12,500. One scratch in here of the number three horse, Snoutus Quo, is scratched out of the race. And this being race number four means we have our late pick five ticket from Acacia, and she will explain it right now. Yes, I have another late pick five ticket. Uh, this one, $48, same price as my earlier one. I went three deep here in this race, two, two, uh, four in the second to last leg in the seventh race. I thought that was a pretty wide open event there and then two in the last like hopefully we make it uh, but this race race number four was an interesting one and I see that Ron we actually have the same horses in the same order <laughs> uh, which hasn't happened yet today uh, but I went with the number five little Kayton on top who's the, the filly here that actually ha is the only one with a win at this distance at one mile and it was her maiden victory yeah she's the daughter of seeking beauties drop into this 12-5 level and stretching out to the distance as you mentioned where she broke her maiden right here in February after a poor of pair of fourth place finishes sprinting that was at the 30 $35,000 to $30,000 level. Uh, Luca Panici will be in the saddle. Michelle Nihei doing a fantastic job. She's got a bunch of winners. I have four or five winners from uh, a limited amount of starters. She's doing exceptionally well. But I know you wanted, had some interest, and we both had some interest in the number four, Sheer Chance, and you wanted to go back and show a backtrack on this horse. I do, yes. I want to show the video from May 4th. This is the most recent start, and uh, a couple of horses came out of this race. This is actually also includes uh, the number three in this race, Snout is who was scratched. She's the number one here. Sheer Chance is still the number four as well. Uh, so you'll see Sheer Chance there. And Sheer Chance had the, the tougher trip of those two horses. It was on the slop. Both of them had very solid finishes. Uh, Sheer Chance finished second. Snoutus Quo finished third. But Sheer Chance had to go on the outside. Had a little, as I said, had a little bit of a tougher trip there. And very valiant effort in the slop. Uh, as you see, nine to two on the number five horse, Liberty Lunch, who just went out. And it looked like uh, sheer chance was getting close to catching her at one point. She wasn't a runaway victor there, and uh, it seemed like the slop didn't bother her at all, even though two back, she had a, a pretty disappointing finish on the sloppy track, but I thought last time out, with that stalking the pace, coming from the outside, showed a lot of tenacity in her trip there. Well, number two, Urabamba, who we both used on the ticket, and I added this one to the ticket. I don't know if you did. I did. Dropping, going back to the dirt after really a shaky performance on the turf. She showed some speed. She was eased up in that race, but you look at this horse's performance, two back versus $25,000, two lifetime claimers. And that performance is good enough to be very successful in the spot at the $12,500 level. So the drop, going back to the main track, a couple of things you got to like about the two Ura Bamba in there. Yeah, and I think that the going back to the main track is really key too because when she runs on the dirt, she tends to show a lot more early speed than she does when she runs on the turf. Well, let's go to race number five this afternoon. 
One mile and one sixteenth on the firm turf course. Claim is three and up. Non-winners of two races in life, $16,000. We do have one scratch in here of the number four horse, Professor Jack. And on top of your ticket is a horse called Turkomani. And I know you had some interest in showing this horse is, uh, I believe it was its race two back. Two back, yes. Yeah. So this was actually the maiden victory for Turkomani over at Tampa, a mile and a sixteenth on the turf, uh, one by a length and a half that day. You'll see is the number three there, uh, very willingly on the inside, had a, a very good trip, a smart ride over there, and uh, came up, along. you'll see him go along the rail, and it looked like he wasn't going to be able to get by, veered around, cut through horses, split horses, and just passed on by the field stalled for a little bit and just kept on rolling through and I thought that was a really impressive performance came back just 10 days after that in an optional claiming race 75,000 and was just really overmatched and was beaten by eight and three quarter lengths I think it was a quick turnaround again overmatched dropping a little bit from there now to this claiming race and gets Emmy Sale Jaramillo aboard to try his luck at Gulfstream and I think he's, he looks like the one to beat to me yeah and you know he finished fifth in that $75,000 optional claimer as you mentioned was sort of tilting windmills in there to try Trainers Reed Nagel and MCL Jaramillo will be in the saddle. But I did go to the horse that you have in second on top, mm -hmm. and that's Val Oro. And this one is uh, now a gelding, uh, debuting locally for a red hot trainer. Look at the record of Francisco D'Angelo's at Gulfstream here it's in the spring summer meet. He's had 10 starts, five wins, 50% win average. Shook, this horse shook off early trouble last time out. He got loose early on, uh, and he, uh, you know, he's fractious at the start, but he came back and he defeated 16,000 dollar maidens on the Tampa turf and he won that race by almost three lengths so he had an excuse in the beginning calm down and this barn is just everything they've shipped over has been running fantastically so yeah. when you have a 50 percent win average I think you got to sort of pay <laughs> attention to this guy absolutely and that was his first start adding Lasix last time out and as you mentioned now debuting as a gelding after that impressive maiden victory second time with Lasix so a lot to like about this horse as well and I rounded it out with the number one acknowledge who's stepping up in distance a little bit closed really nicely last time out but uh, I'm not sure how the stretch out will do I'm not sure how much speed he'll actually have to run at but I rounded it out with him on my ticket I use the eight number eight in here on earn now in the Michelle Nihe barn this one makes it a trio of Tampa shippers uh, that defeated sixteen thousand dollars on the maiden turf uh, maidens on the turf up there at Tampa so three of those horses are one at the sixteen thousand dollar level and of course honor earned one of being one of those it's the son of Graham Hall he's uh, uh, ran here before he's had three starts in the Gulfstream turf and actually hit the board in one of those and of course Luca Panici in the saddle today so I close it out with the number eight on earned who I believe is a, a square price on the board he's like six or eight to one or something like that let's go to race number six this afternoon six and one half furlongs claimers fillies and mares three-year-olds and up non-winners of three races in life or three-year-olds and we have uh, eight runners are gonna uh, go to the post in this particular race and uh, loyal heart on top of my ticket want to go back and show you this horse's uh, last performance. I thought it was pretty impressive. Uh, you know, goes off and wins it by like, you know, five and a half lengths. So I thought I would show you that performance from the number two Loyal Heart once they crank it up and there you go. So number <laughs> two Loyal Heart uh, just cruising to victory. They crushed older horses in there. You know, a lot of people at this time of the year don't know whether to use three-year-olds against older horses. Well, this was a, r a race against oldest horses trying to win two in a row uh, and third race in its last four starts. So in good form, has proven it, uh, you know, against older horses I just thought after performance I put a, the number three loyal heart on top of my ticket but I can understand having the morning line favorite right up there and that's the six bluegrass lady yeah, this one went off as the favorite in her last three starts and is yet to actually win as the favorite. But she had a muddy track taken off the turf last time. Uh, that was her first start in the barn of Marcial Navarro. First off the claim. Uh, now she's coming back in just six days. So second start with the barn. She ended up finishing second last time out, but she was beaten by four and a half lengths. Crime Buzz just ran away with it in the mud last time out. Seemed really happy in that. Uh, and I think that, that this one, Bluegrass Lady, I'll give her one more shot. Eddie Castro is aboard once again. I think second start in the barn. Barn. She's looking to actually get that victory. She probably will go off as the favorite and might deliver this time. Well, I agree with everything you're saying there, except the only thing I didn't like was the two to one morning line, so yeah. trying to beat that one. I closed it out with the number eight, Picanisa. This one cutting back to six and a half furlongs. Five previous races at this distance, a win, two seconds, and a third. After taking the overland route last time out and finishing a five wide fifth as the favorite, going seven furlongs. This one was out near the popcorn stand, <laughs> so I think with a closer trip, maybe the number eight, Picanisa, could run well in there. 
How'd you close out the ticket? Yeah, well, now that I'm craving popcorn, <laughs> yeah, I ended up going with the number four Street Princess. So there's, there's quite a bit of speed in here, uh, including your top selection, Loyal Heart, and my top selection, Bluegrass Lady. And Street Princess is one that seems to have the ability to stalk the pace or close a little bit. So I uh, figured that she might be able to come from a little bit further back and round out the top three. Well, let's go to race number seven this afternoon. And this is where the first half of the late a daily double would start. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Maiden claim is three and up. $16,000 scratch the number eight in here. Looking over us. And I went with the number nine horse in here. And I'll kick it off. And that's Toro de Oro. A recent gelding now in the Michelle Nihe barn is cutting back slightly to seven and a half furlongs after finishing, I thought, a game second against similar going a mile. Uh, the new connections, they keep the status quo. They got MCL Jaramillo in the saddle. Uh, been really impressed with the job that Michelle has been doing. And she better have a good day today. Sounds like I picked her in a couple of races. So number nine. Toro de Auto on top of my ticket. You did go with the number six horse in here, and that is Daddy Duke. Yes, well, a lot of things to like about Toro de Oro for sure, and uh, I, I totally agree with everything that you're saying. It's the first time gelding. Another first time gelding is the number seven, Schweetz, who I also used. But the one that I put on top that I just think might be um, the, the sneaky one to come and take the, the win here is the number six, Daddy Duke, dropping just very slightly. Only two starts so, so far, so a very lightly raced gelding here uh, debuted on the dirt and finished third switched over to the turf last time out was a little bit sl uh, step slow coming out of the gate uh, I think if you get a little bit of a better break now and that little bit of a drop Kathleen O'Connell is the trainer and Eduardo Nunez will be in the saddle number four Don Matt Parker is <laughs> debuting locally and cutting back to seven and a half furlongs after setting the pace and getting court late when third second and second respectively in the trio of sixteen thousand dollar maiden races going longer on the Tampa turf Maybe the cutback will get this horse out of third and second gear. We'll see how number four, Don Nat Parker, runs today. And uh, actually is the morning line favorite, which uh, I, I didn't think that would be the case. And who else did you use in here? Well, I used uh, the number seven, uh, Schweetz, uh, no. another first-time gelding. Debuted as a huge long shot uh, on mile on the turf and finished a very, very respectable second. Was claimed uh, and, and had moved over into the barn of Juan Arias. Came back to try and do the same thing and was beaten by more than 13 lengths and uh, now has had the ultimate equipment change after going off as the favorite. <laughs> so went off like 90, 90 something to one and then the favorite and now has uh, coming back as a gelding. Might be able to get rid of some of those focus issues or whatever uh, was holding him back last time out and ended up weakening a bit. So I think uh, with all of that combined, coming to run a big one today. Well, you know I was going to talk about the one horse in here, Pasta Giovanni. This one was a better than it appears on paper second at this level and la distance last time out. Went five wide on the first turn and beaten only three and a half lengths. The trainer is Doug Seiler and he keeps it light. He's got 10 pound apprentice in there. And uh, this is a son of a sweet return. So uh, Pasta Giovanni, I think maybe, uh, uh, you know, can uh, get a piece of this in here and everything. And you know I had to put Pasta Giovanni. If there ever was a sentimental <laughs> favorite, it really is. Let's go to the final race on the Wednesday card, race number eight, six furlongs. Claim is three and up, 12-5. And we have a full field of 10 runners in here with no scratches. And you went with the number one Prague on top of your ticket. I did. This one looks to really be the speed from the rail. Tried the turf last time out, and that was certainly a no-go. I think moving back to the dirt will be his preferred surface. Two back, had a solid second, and prior to that, uh, one by five lengths at, at five and a half furlongs before moving over into the Ramon Moya barn. Uh, as I said, I, I think that he's going to be the speed. Also has a nice, a couple of nice works coming into here, very consistent, and coming back over to the dirt off that turf day, uh, turf try last time out. Didn't really seem to take much out of him because he didn't do too much running, so I think he might be able to blast off from the rail and call it a day. Well, my best bet is in this race, as I mentioned earlier on when I showed you my Rainbow Six ticket, and that's the nine, Sherry Khan, and this one is stepping up, stretching out. After drawing off the defeat, defeat excuse me, a pair of next out winners, that was a 6,250 open claimer going five and a half furlongs. Rashawn Greeky, Ed, uh, Ed Garzias going for two in a row. I just thought coming out of that key race, I thought this horse will sit a nice trip, and I think it's six to one on the morning line, so uh, see if I can do it in there. But I also used the number one prog on my 
ticket. Now, you went to the 10 horse in here, and that's good boy Charlie in the second spot, a horse I did not use, but up there at four to one on the line. Yeah, it was between good boy Charlie and crazy Frank C, <coughs> excuse me, who, crazy Frank C, just a ever consistent horse, and um, I, I could see him doing well, of course, too, but I went for one who was four to one on the morning line, coming off about a four month layoff, a very solid second last time out uh, at this level after dueling, was very willing, had, had tried uh, a little bit tougher company in the slot prior to that, and that was a no-go. And uh, look if he, I think if he gets back to the form that he was keeping this past summer and early fall, then uh, he might be one to be able to run well. And coming off that layoff, some really nice works as well. Three furlongs and 36 in one on May 11th. So looking to be pretty sharp coming into this race. Well, let's talk about Crazy Frank C. He's another going back to the dirt after rallying to finish third against 12-5 claimers. Uh, going two turns, that was seven and a half furlongs on the turf. Pedro Sabarzo, uh, Pedro Monterey Jr., handling the combination surface switch, turn back in distance. So uh, doing a couple of things here, maybe to spark that wake-up call. And like, like you said, a hard-knocking campaigner certainly could be somewhere on the ticket. Well, that's how we see the uh, card. We're, we're back together again. We'll see how this uh, plays out. and it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the song, right? Yes. We'll be back in a little while. But you know what? We're going to turn it over to Pete first. He's going to give you some uh, scratches and changes and everything to have a fun day here at beautiful Gulfstream Park. Always good to be back home. Yes. Good luck today, everybody. What do I love about horses?